What's up everybody, Imchul here, and welcome to the series on WinCorp. So WinCorp is an insane series on TriHackMe, and the creators basically tried to make the boxes as life as lifelike as possible based on their own experiences, frustrations, and amazements. So in this video, we'll be looking at RA or RA, which is the fir first part to the series. And this box is rated as hard in terms of difficulty, as you can see here at the top. And I already have it spinning so that we don't have to wait. And the story is you have gained access to the internal network of WinCorp, the multi-billion dollar company running an extensive social media campaign claiming to be unhackable. Next step would be to take their crown jewels and get full access to the internal network. You have spotted a new Windows machine that may lead you to your end goal. Can you conquer this inbox and own the internal network? Happy hacking. So I'm gonna just give a brief overview of what we're gonna find in this room. So on this box, you had to pay attention to the employees page. That's the website and put two and two together to, re to reset an employee password. Once you have done that, you can access the user's share via SMB and download an instant messenger that has a known CV that will allow you to grab another user's hash. So just a quick note in terms of downloading and installing this instant messenger. If you're using the latest version of Kali Linux, you might have problems. I for sure had problems trying to install the Java 8 runtime environment, which is a dependency of the instant messenger. So I had to switch to Parrot just to get through the room because then I was able to install Java 8. So once you get another user's hash, you can crack this hash and log into the account with a bit of enumeration you can find a peculiar directory that contains a script running like a cron job in Linux. If you change the contents of the script, that allows us to get a shell as the admin, or we can add a new user to the administrator group, which is the route we are going to take. And so let's jump straight into it. Okay, so here is our in-map scan. And just at first glance, if you're used to doing hack the box a lot, the enumeration phase for this box might seem a little overwhelming as a lot of ports are open. However, if you triage properly, you'll be able to get by pretty quickly. And one of the things I've learned and that I keep learning and I'm trying to reinforce is the fact that if you triage properly, uh, you will get by. And so what I've been trying to do is I try to take a look at SMB first, depending on what ports are open, I'll try to take a look at SMB first see if I have access to any shares anonymously before I have any credentials, of course. If I do, see where I can grab there, and then I move on. If there's a website or any HTTP ports open, I take a look at those. From there, if I can't find anything, I start looking at things like uh, RPC binding and other stuff, LDAP, you know? So let's get into this box and see what we can do. And at first glance, we have port 53 open, that is DNS. So we might be adding some stuff to our etc. hosts. And port 80, 88, Kerberos, the SMB ports, LDAP, we have LDAP secure, and a bunch of other stuff. We have 3389 open as well. That is your either evil win or M or RDP. It's 5222, that's Jabba. You might find the CVE for this. If you dig deep, there's JD 9.48 on port 7070. That's an HTTP port. It looks juicy. We might get to it, we might not, right? So there's a lot of stuff you could go through. So if you look closely, you can see that there's a fire.wincorp.thm, right? And at the top here, there's another domain name, the main domain, that is the wincorp.thm. I keep butchering that word. I hope I don't have to say it too much. Anyways, so we're gonna have to add these to our Etsy hosts. Let's go ahead and do that. I will use Nano just for this part. Don't judge me. Etsy hosts, if I can type, that is. And I did not run as sudo. Okay, so I already have these added. I just have to change the IP address. And we are good to go. So like I said, we could start with SMB, just to list any shares we might have access to. Anonymous, 
and we do not. So we might have to do this with credentials if we find any. And this is the web server. It says Win Corporation. Welcome to our company portal. There's a read set password button. There's a search functionality. Uh, IT staff. And if you look closely and pay attention, this is the only green one. So that kind of stands out. We'd see what we can do with that later on. And um, HR employees is Emily, Lily, and Kirk. Right. That's Lily with a dog. Says, love it. Thanks for believing in me. I love being able to bring my best friend to work with me. And I assume the best friend is the dog. Kirk, every day is a treat. Right. Okay. These are the employees that are in focus. So we could try some of the buttons and see what they do. Search. You can search Wadi. It's one of my favorite words. And the search functionality does not do anything. We can try reset. And as you can see, it takes us to fire.wincorp.thm slash reset.asp. So it says username is a question, and then you can research your password. So the questions are, what is your mother's maiden name? What is your first grade teacher's name? What was your favorite pet's name? What was or what is? What make? What make was your first car? So the fact that this is what was or what is your favorite pet's name gives us a hint as to what we might be doing. And as you can see, back down at the employees, we saw someone with a pet, right, Lily. And we need to find the pet's name. And hopefully, if we do that, we can change Lily's password. So we can open this in a new tab, right, view image. And the name of the image is Lily, L-E and sparky so we can assume that this is the name of her dog right her pet's name that's her pet's name so let's try research her password and see if we can do that so the username was lily le the dog's name was sparky and change this Fingers crossed. And it says your password has been reset to change me, pound sign one, two, three, four. And that is a good thing. So now we have a password and a username, which we can use to try gain access in other ways on the network, right? We can spray this password around and see what we get. Uh, so I will just echo this. and keep those credentials close by. So we have a couple of ports open. We have 3389, we can try RDP into our machine. We have SMB, uh, which we couldn't list any shares, but we, now that we have credentials, we can try check that again. So if we go up and use her name, paste in our password, great, we have open shares that we can access. So this shared and this uses. We can start with the one at the top. That is shared. Sir, can you type? I guess not. Paste in our password. Fingers crossed. And we are in. So we get our first flag. We can download that and then we can see that there are installation packages for something called spark so what we can do is we can download spark right we can get spark does smbf autocomplete yes it does dot deb also downloading that we can google spark 2.8.3 and we see that Spark is an IM client. It's an open source cross-platform IM client. IM meaning instant messenger, optimized for businesses and organizations, right? So there's a GitHub where you can download the latest releases probably. And we can check if it has an exploit since we know the version number. And here at the top it says CVE 2020-12772. Let's check that out. Just see the description, see what it does. 
and hopefully we can exploit the Spark 2.8.3. Okay, so an issue discovered in Ignite Real-Time Spark 2.8.3. A chat message can include an image element with a source attribute referencing an external host IP address. Upon access to this external host, the NTLM hashes of the user are sent with the HTTP request. That's intriguing and that's dangerous. This allows an attacker to collect these hashes, crack them and potentially compromise the computer. So just based on the description, we have an idea of what we're supposed to do. And that is we are supposed to send someone a message that contains an image element with our host IP address. And we could listen with responder and hopefully grab whoever opens the mass message. We can grab, um, the hash. Let's try that out. So since we got the spark, this timed out, but I already have it installed. You could use sudo dp kg tag i. Can I really type today? And then you can install it that way. I already have it installed. So I'm going to just type spark and get it running. Before you log in, um, you're going to want to go to advanced. And this box right here is going to be unchecked. So you're going to have to check it so that you disable certificate host name verification, right? That will allow you to sign in as someone who's not part of um, the WinCorp domain, right? So we need the password. I'm just grab the password real quick. I saved it somewhere. And there it is. I don't need the space. Copy that. Go back to Spark paste it in there and we can log in can we okay we are in as you can see Lily is online and as you can see free chat that's the icon online is green away is yellow do not disturb is red and invisible is silver so if you remember from somewhere we looked at earlier these colors are there and if you're paying close attention and you're putting stuff in your back pocket you'd realize quick enough that these are the same colors that were corresponding to the it stuff on the website right we have yellow silver we have green and silver silver yellow right so these people are away the yellow people are away and the silver people are invisible but there's someone online and that is views right and if you click around in the instant messenger you can see that you can add contacts so let's add views as a contact and it says pending but you can still send views a message by double clicking that okay so here it is we can send views a message and hopefully if he opens the message like it says um upon access to the external host the ntlm hashes of this user are sent with the http request so once he if we send him a message with an image tag if he accesses this his ntlm hash is going to be sent to us and hopefully we can capture his hash so let's grab our ip address and get responder listening i'm just gonna get my IP address first and then clear that out responder capital I that is my interface and my password so responder is listening we're gonna go send views a message and then Can I really type today? And once we send this through, we should get Buse's hash and crack it, hopefully. And there we go, the hash came through. So we can copy this. And throw this in a file called hash. 
So we can thank Buse for his hash. We thank him for his hash and then we close out the chat. Now we're not going to need Spark anymore so you can close it out. All right, so now that we have his hash, this is an NTLM v2 hash, and we can crack it with hashcat or John. I prefer hashcat. But first, we are going to need to check what number NTLM v2 hashes are. As you can see, it's 5600. So we can use hashcat tag A0 tag M5600, the hash file. And we are going to use rockyu.txt, you know, the default thing. And we'll let that run. So it'll only take a second. And as you can see, it's back. And we have a password. And hopefully, we can spray this around the network and access someone's computer. And in this case, it's going to be views. Save those credentials and if we go back to our nmap scan which you should always have saved out so that you don't have to redo it every time um we should see that we have 3389 open which means we can rdp into bees's computer we have smb open but 3389 also means we have the opportunity to use evil win rm which is what I am going to use. It's password and the host name. And I'll let that log in. It takes a while because this machine's kind of slow. But give it a second and there we go. It worked. So we are in Buse's computer and we can ls and see if there's anything in this documents. There isn't. Flags are usually saved on the desktop if you can type desktop actually right okay so there's our second flag you can download it you can cut it out there's notes and there's two directories let's take a look at the notes i should really be better at taking in okay that's not complete we can get into the first directory And there's images in this directory. You can download them and see if you can get any exif data from them. I already did this and I can tell you that you won't. That is not the intended path. But at some point, sometimes you do stumble over unintended paths. And so you should always give that a go. Stuff. There's a directory called passwords, really. You can just, you really just call it directory passwords. That is dumb. And there's a Facebook.txt. I keep fat fingering everything. And I mistyped Facebook. Great. And this Facebook password is password. We can try spray this around and see if we can escalate privileges or get into someone else's account. But in this case, that is not going to work. So we'll do a bit more enumeration. First, we start in the C drive. And we can do who am I, right? We are views. What groups do we belong to? So we belong to users, compatible access. I have no idea what that is. Account operators, remote desktop. Like I mentioned, you could RDP into the machine. Remote management, authenticated users, NTLM authentication. Okay, so what stands out for me here is the fact that we are a member of the account operators group. And this means we can change people's passwords, right? So we can change someone else's password, log into their machine, and see if we can escalate privileges from there. But for now, we shall continue our enumeration, right? And we are in the C drive and straight off the bat, 
you can see that this script's directory is peculiar. It's the only one with small caps and it generally isn't there in other C drives, right? And you can ls and see what is in it. So we have a checksivers.ps1, that's the PowerShell script, and a log.txt. We can cat the log and see what it says. It says last run at this time. So we can assume, it's safe to assume that this is for the check service script, right? So we can cat that out and see what it's doing. Go back to the top. So basically, what this PowerShell script is doing, it is going to the user Brittany, Brittany, I have no idea how to pronounce that, my bad. And it's opening the hosts, right? It's getting the content of the host.txt, and then it's running that where the object is a match. So looking at this, we have an idea of what we're supposed to do. We can change the contents of the host.txt file. And since it's being run by the admin, hopefully we can get a shell as the admin or we can add a user to the administrators group, right? So we can try go into Brittany CR. We can ls, but we have permission denied. So what do we do from here? If you remember a few moments ago, we noticed that we are a member of account operators and like we said we can change people's passwords so what we can do is we can change Brittany's password login change the contents or add to the contents of the host file and then make ourselves an admin right so that was what that is what we are going to do so we can use let me just clear the screen first can I do that no okay Net user Brittany CR. So we are going to change our password to password and then slash domain. And we get an error. It says the password does not meet the password policy requirements. Check the minimum password length, complexity, and history requirements. So we can just try and make this harder or a bit more, you know fancy looking password one two three and that worked which means we can try login as the user Brittany so we can either use RDP evil win or him like we're using with views or SMB right and I think SMB would be the quickest way to get and put it back win thm we want to get into users as Brittany CR. Is it RC or CR? I keep forgetting. And what is her password? We put it as password one, two, three, exclamation. Paste that in and we are in. Go to her thing ls and as you can see we have the host.txt so we can get that and then in a separate folder we can add to it so if we just see what is in it make that bigger there's google.com and cisco so what we're going to do is append to the file and hopefully we can get a shell from there by making ourselves an admin user, right? So what I'm gonna do is echo net user intro add. Is this how you add a user? I keep forgetting. Net user add. Type net user username password. Oh, we need the password as well. And then add. Net user username and password will be password three two one and then add make sure it meets the password complexity and then 
we will make ourselves an administrator net user no to make ourselves an administrator net local groups i hate these commands local group Come on, come on, come on. Okay, so it's knit local group administrator. Okay, knit local group. I'm just copy that. Make sure I don't have any typos. Remove that. Paste that in. Make myself an admin okay so we are going to append that to hosts.txt and if we cat out our host file there are our commands and hopefully if we let this run we can log in as the user mtrl so i'm gonna put this back let me just try delete this first Okay, we deleted that. It's not there anymore. Put hosts.txt. There. It is there. Now. So we're going to exit here. And from here, what we're going to do is check out the log file. And see how we are doing. We'll just let it run for a minute. Okay, so it's 1535.02, so we'll come back at 1536 or 37, and then we'll try login as the user intro, and hopefully we will be an administrator. Okay, okay, we are back, and as you can see, it ran again, and so let's try logging in as the user we added. So we will use evil win our M again. The username is intro. The password is password. 321 exclamation mark and the domain is wincorp.thm and fingers crossed we get in let's give it a second and hopefully come on sir bing bong we are in and hopefully we are an admin and we need to type that properly and as you can see, we are in admin. And we can get into the user folder. Users, rather. I'm so excited I'm an admin. I don't know how to type anymore, but I couldn't type before even. We can get into administrator. Is it there? No, it is on the desktop. And there you have your third flag. So that is the room. And hopefully you had a great time. I'll catch you in the next one as we continue the series and prepare for the PNPT. Thank you for watching.